Okay, my presentation is called the Binomial Theorem Delirium. First, I'm going to talk about Fibonacci. His full name is Leonardo Pisano Bogolio of Pisa, Italy, and was the best Western mathematician in the Middle Ages, but he was best known for the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence sub, uh, used, uh, is abbreviated F sub n, but the formula is F sub n equals F sub n minus 1 plus F sub n minus 2, or in other words, each, each number in the sequence is the sum of the two preceding numbers. And with the seed values 0 and 1, it automatically starts with that. Everything else follows that pattern and the sequence we get that. Fibonacci also created something called the golden mean, which occurs a lot in nature. And up close you can see that each and every, that each and every square, one and one there, are take up the same space as the two, and then the three take up the same space as the two and the one. The fives take up the same space as the three and the two, the eights takes up space and so on, all the way around there. Now, when you zoom out, you get this. Golden mean can also appear a lot in nature, such as a piece of a shell. It also appears in chameleon tails and certain cacti. And also, a sunflower, it appears in a sunflower, because it has, it has 34 spirals, which is a Fibonacci number. It also appears in different flower types. Certain lilies and irises have three petals. Columbines and buttercups have five petals. Delphiniums have eight petals. Corn marigolds have 13 petals. And asters have 21 petals. Now another very interesting occurrence of the Fibonacci sequence is in the family tree of that one male bee. First let me t explain that um, when a female on, on her own, has birth to a uh, has birth, it's just, she will create a male. When a female and a male reproduce together, they create a female. So a female to, on, her, on her own makes a male, female and a male make a female. So we have one male here, then one female, and that female is created by a female and male, that's two. Then that female is created by a female and a male, and that male is created by a female. That's three, and this, and then this pat, this continues, and you get five and eight. That also follows the Fibonacci sequence. It occurs in a human hand, and also in the length of the joints in centimeters. Now, what has been puzzling most people is why the Fibonacci sequence occurs in nature, and I researched this, and what the answers I got were. The Fibonacci, the nature doesn't follow this pattern because Fibonacci made it so. That is. And it's that Fibonacci based this pattern around what he'd experienced in nature. And also, this pattern helps with which leaves get enough sunlight, which leaves get enough spaces, get enough space to grow. So it's an, uh, a natural selection advantage. Next person I'm going to talk about is very important is Blaise Pascal. Now I'm going to read a quick crazy quote from him which I don't understand. I have no clue what it is about. Nature is an infinite sphere of which the center is everywhere and the circumference is nowhere. <laughs> he was a French mathematician, a physicist, and a philosopher. He got deeper and essentially formulized projective geometry, which I don't quite know what it is, and helped and got deeper into probability. And he built one of the first adding machines at age 18. That's a picture of it. But he's best known for Pascal's triangle. Every number is the sum of the two numbers above it. Like two is the sum of one and one, three is the sum of one and two, three is the sum of one and two. And also, what's interesting about Pascal's triangle is it's an, a palindrome, or it reads the same back and forth. You can flip it around and it'll read exactly the same. 
Another thing is that when you add them up, you get 2 to the power of something. Let's say row 1 is the 0 exponent, which is just going to be 1, because anything to the 0 is 1. Then row 2 is 2, which is 2 to the 1. Row 3, when you add those all up, you get 4, which is 2 squared. And this continues all the way down the triangle. I'll let you know that the triangle is endless, but that's just how much I wrote of it. This is the same triangle, only slid over. And when you add them up diagonally, you get 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55, which are all Fibonacci numbers. And Blaise Pascal didn't even realize this until after he was dead. I don't think he realized it as a dead person. But other people, discovered, other people found out that the Fibonacci sequence was hidden inside his triangle. Now I'm going to review exponents because for what we're going to get to later, we'll need to... An exponent refers to a number of times the base or the or number is multiplied by itself. Our example is 2 cubed. The base is 2, the exponent is 3. 2 to the third is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Every time an exponent goes down by 1, the product has been divided by the base once. So 2 to the 5th equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 32. 2 to the 4th equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16 equals 32 over 2. 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 is 16 over 2. 2 squared is 2 times 2 is 4 is 8 over 2. And 2 to the 1 is 2, which is 4 over 2. Any base... It's, it can be a number or a variable. If it's raised to the zero power, it equals one. For instance, two to the one is two, which is four over two. And two to the zero is one, two over two. You just take the same thing and go down by once. And also, x to the zero, a variable to the zero, equals one also, which is x over x. When you multiply like bases, you add the exponents. This is called the product rule. 2, two to the 5th times 2 to the 2 cubed equals 2 times 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 2, which is 2 to the 5 plus 3 is 2 to the 8 equals 32. But, and it's the same when you divide like bases, only you subtract the exponents. It's called the quotient rule. 2 to the 5th over 2 cubed equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 over 2 times 2 times 2. Three twos cancel out, and we just get 2 to the 5 minus 3 equals 2 squared equals 4. And when you raise an exponent to another power, you multiply both, called the power rule. However, I don't have an example of this. Next, I'm going to talk about binomials and the FOIL method. A binomial is an expression with two terms. Terms can be simple, such as x plus y, or more complex, such as 3k to the 5th plus pi z to the 9th. Happy Pi Day! <laughs> <laughs> Binomials can be raised to powers and follow exponent rules, such as x plus y cubed equals x plus y times x plus y times x plus y, x plus y squared equals x plus y times x plus y. And x plus y to the 1 equals x plus y. And of course, x plus y to the 0 equals x plus y over x plus y equals 1. <laughs> a second order binomial or two binomials can be expanded slash multiplied using the FOIL method. FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last. How you use the FOIL method by First, you multiply the first term, you get x squared. Then you multiply these terms, you get xy plus xy plus y squared. And then when you combine the like terms, you get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. For a second order binomial, the FOIL method works fine. But what about using it for a third order binomial? This is going to be harder x plus y times x plus y times x plus y. When those multiply together, it's x squared plus 2xy plus y squared times x plus y. First you get x, x cubed plus x squared y 
plus 2x squared y plus 2xy squared plus xy squared plus y cubed. And then we combine the like terms again, x cubed plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. We clearly need a better method of expanding bigger, big binomials. You can use Pascal's triangle for a binomial expansion under certain circumstances. One, that there are no co coefficients on the variables. And two, the exponent is not too high. Our example, s plus d to the sixth, and for sky plus dad to the sixth. Pascal's triangle only generates the coefficients. Fortunately, the variables progress predictably. The exponent on the x term goes down, and the exponent on the y term goes up, each by one. In other words, first let me, let me explain summation. Summation, the sum of i equals zero to n means all the way zero plus one plus two, all the way up to whatever your n is. And so sum, uh, i equals one to four would be one plus two plus three plus four. And so using the variables s and d, sky and dad, we conclude that s to the sixth plus s to the fifth d plus s to the fourth d squared plus s cubed d cubed plus s squared d to the fourth plus s d to the fifth plus d to the sixth. But to find the coefficients of the sixth order expansion, we have to use the numbers of the seventh row. So here we show row one represents the binomial raised to the zero power. So we go to the seventh rows there and we insert those numbers into the series. And our final answer is that.